Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing very well. Here in this session, we are going to discuss about water jug problem, implementation of this problem using Python. And we are going to use BFS that is breadth first search and DFS that is depth first search techniques. And to see that how using these techniques, we can solve water jug problem efficiently. But before that, I am requesting you to watch the basic concept of this problem, which I have discussed earlier. The link is mentioned in the description section so that you can understand what is water jug problem, what are various rules that we need to create first for implementation of this problem, what are the real-time application of this problem in real world, what is the time complexity for the algorithm that we have designed for water jug problem, and whether this problem is uh, uh, NP problem, NP completer, NP hard problem. So for up to which class this problem belongs. So each and everything we have discussed very well in the earlier lecture of water jug problem. And in this session, we are going to do the implementation part. So the code is written uh, very well, neat and clean. And I am going to explain line by line. The flow would be according to me as I am going to give you the complete clarity over the implementation part. So you can understand this part very well, but you need to be patient, watch this video till the end and definitely I can guarantee that at the end you will get each and every concept of this problem. So let's start. I hope the code is visible to you, let, but still let me try to uh, just to zoom out the screen and uh, I hope that, uh, okay, this is sufficient. You can, uh, be, you can see each and every letter, whatever is written on the screen, right? Okay. So we are starting from the main function. So basically, if you are going to see here, the two lines are written here and the things are very much clearly written that if one method is there, that is the main, and thereafter we are assigning something to it that is main under a single cut and in the uh, bottom part is written like list two. So basically what this first two line means. So this simply means that here, we are just checking and we are just observing that whether the Python script is being run as the main program and it is not being imported as a main module. If this condition is going to be true, then the code which is identified under the if part is going to be executed. And here list two, you can simply see that this list two is going to create an empty list and uh, assign it to the variable list two. Now you can simply see that what we are doing here. So in the first two line max jug one, it is a variable. You can simply say that an integer variable max jug two again, one more integer variable and we are storing the capacities of jug one and jug two by asking user to give some input inter value of max jug one and enter value of max jug2. These both values can be entered by user and they are going to store in max jug1 and max jug2 respectively. So here we are just asking the user to just uh, let us know what are the value of maximum jug1 and maximum jug2, correct? Thereafter, you can simply see that that initial node equals to node none. So basically here, you can see that the instance of class node is created and we are assigning it to the variable initial. So basically what is node class we need to understand first. So we have defined the node class here, class node. And inside this class node, you can simply see that uh, class node is defining the structure of a node and this structure is having three instance variable. One is X, the other one is Y, and the third one is parent. I hope you can see it clearly. Here, X and Y, these two instances of uh, node class are initialized to zero and parent is assigned to data. This class is also having a REPR method Basically, it is returning the string representation of the node in the form of x comma y, right? So I hope the node class is clear. And before that, we have just imported time and random. They are very 
uh, there just uh, you can see that uh, you can just say that uh, import time so this module is going to provide us the time related functions and import random this module is going to provide us the function for generating random numbers okay so for random number generating we are using random module and for time related function we are using import time right okay so let's come back to our main function from where we have started so you can simply see that here in this part in the highlighted part initial node equals to node none initial node dot x equals to 0 initial node dot y equals to 0 and initial node dot parent equals to none <laughs> excuse me so basically here node class have three instances that is x y and parent and x and y both are initially set to 0 and parent node is initially set to set to none correct thereafter if you are going to see we are having goal node right now it is none and we are asking user to enter the water that he or she wants to see at the end in jug1 and we are storing that variable in goal node dot x so we are storing that particular variable into goal node variable of uh, class node instance x so at the end we need some amount of water let's say the capacity of jug 1 is 4 liter let's say capacity of jug 2 is 3 liter and user is entering we need 2 liter of water at the end in jug 1 by default we have set the jug 2 goal as a 0 so at the end we require 0 liter of water in the jug 2 and right now parent is set as a none right because we are right now don't not having any go uh, we have we are not executed any goal node so initially it is none thereafter if we want we can print the maximum jug value is this and maximum jug value of 2 is like that we can print it like that thereafter again a simple printf statement that is bfs algorithm is running and this statement is going to give us the interface that bfs algorithm start execution at the same time this time dot time so this time dot time you are going to see this time dot time is a function that we are deriving from the import time that module and it is going to start the time it is going to count down the time and just it is going to start countdown when we are going to start bfs algorithm so you can simply see that that uh, here this BFS algorithm is a function and this BFS main is a function member of the variable. It is a function member of the BFS algorithm function. So basically BFS main is a member function of BFS algorithm function and it is taking initial node and goal node as an argument and the complete value after execution of this function is going to be assigned to solution node variable correct so let's try to understand what this bfs algorithm function is doing so let's go to the bfs function first so if you are going to see i am at bfs function yes here bfs class is there so we are at bfs function right now and you can simply see that inside this bfs algorithm class this is going to implement the BFS algorithm. It has four instances. The one instance is BFS queue. The other instance is push list. Other instance is pop node. And one more is, is empty. So these four instance variables we have created inside this class BFS algorithm. Now let's understand what they are doing. What they will do. So BFS queue, this part, BFS queue is a list that is going to store the nodes. This push list, this push list is going to add the list of nodes to BFS queue. This is going to push the list of nodes to BFS queue. Then we are having pop node. So this pop node is going to return 
the first node from BFSQ, you know the property of Q, first in, first out, FIFO. So it is going to DQ the topmost or front element, or you can simply say that the first node from the BFSQ and this is empty. This is empty function is going to check whether this BFSQ is empty or not. Okay. This BFS class is also having two methods. One method is generate all successors and other method is BFS main. So this generate all successor method, basically it is going to generate all the successor nodes of the current node. All the successor node of current node. Now, here one list is there whose name is list one and initially it is empty. Now, this, uh, this particular generate all successor method is going to iterate over the rules from 1 to 9. You know, if you are using rule 1 to 9 means it is going to iterate 8 times. 1 to length minus 1 times. That is, all the rules are going to iterate and what this iteration is doing over. So, this iteration is going to be work over operation function. And whatever this operation function is going to return that particular value we are going to assign to next node. So for that, we need to understand this operation function. So if you are going to see this operation function is having two arguments. The argument number one is current node, C node. It means that it is the name of current node. And the second one is rule. It means that which rule we are applying on. So let's go to the operation function. So we have defined our operation function here. Now you can simply see that this function performs a specific operation on the node current node and returns as the result of the operation and it is going to return. It is going to uh, write the result of the operation, right? Now, you can simply say that here we are having certain rules. If rule is equals to equals to 1, it means that you know that we have discussed the water jug problem earlier where we have defined 8 sets of rules. So, if rule is 1, it means that the predefined condition is that x is less than max jug 1. If the x is having lesser than maximum jug 1, it means that x is having some capacity so that we can fill it, we can assign x equals to max jug 1. Ultimately, we are filling jug 1 to its full capacity using rule number 1. If it is not rule number 1, we are not going to return anything, return none. Alif, else if, if rule number 2 is there, inside rule number 2, what we are doing? We are checking the predefined condition if y is less than max jug 2. It means that y is having some capacity. It means that y is some, somewhat empty. In that case, we are going to fill it. Y equals to max jug 2. It is going to fill that water, fill that jug, fill that jug completely. You know that we are having unlimited source of water. So we can fill it. So in and if it is not rule 2, we are not going to return anything. So inside rule, we are filling jug 1 to its full capacity. Using rule number 2, we are filling jug 2 to its fill capa full capacity. Now what rule number 3 is saying? If x is greater than 0, it means that it means that jug 1 is already having some water. So using rule number 3, we can make, we can max x equals to 0. It means that we can empty jug 1. If we want to empty complete jug 1, we can empty it using rule number 3. This iteration will be done. In inside fourth rule, fourth rule is saving. If y is greater than 0, it means that jug 2, jug 2 is having some water, we can make it completely empty by making y equals to 0. So using rule number 4, we are emptying complete jug 2. So rule number 1 is making jug 1 full. Rule number 2 is making jug 2 full. Rule number 3 is making jug 1 complete empty. And rule number 4 is making jug 2 complete empty. Now rule number 5. What rule number 5 is saying, you can say if x plus y is greater than or equals to max jug 1, it means that x plus y, if we are going to add the both jugs water and it is greater than the capacity of maximum jug 1, 
it means in that case we can pour some water from jug 2 to jug 1 in jug 2's capacity will be adjusted like y minus max jug 1 minus x so let's say max jug 1 is having 4 liter of capacity and whatever amount we are pouring from x we can subtract it in that particular value we are going to subtract from the current status of the water from that jug so we are pouring some water from jug 2 to jug 1 right and we can do it using rule number 5 so this is going to done in rule number 6 what we are doing we are checking if x plus y is greater than maximum jug 2 it means that jug 2 is x plus y is greater than jug 2 then we can pour some water from jug 1 to jug 2 because we are subtracting some amount of water from x it means that we are pouring some water from jug 1 to jug 2 so if we want to pour some water from jug 2 to jug 1 we can use rule number 5 and if we want to pour some water from jug 1 to jug 2 we can use this rule number 6 in rule number 7 we are pouring some water from jug 2 to jug 1 but here the difference is that we are making completely what uh, we are making jug 2 completely empty it means that we are completely pouring jug 2 into jug 1 and predefined condition is like x plus y is less than maximum jug 1 in that case only we can say that no water would be wasted and complete water of jug 2 will be poured into jug 2 and jug 2 will be jug 1 will become x plus y it means that all the water of jug 2 is poured into jug 1 it means that already jug 1 is having the capacity so that it can hold the water that y is having that jug 2 is having so if we want to pour complete water of jug 2 into jug 1 we can use we can do it using rule number 7 and using rule number 8 what we are doing we are pouring some water from jug 1 to jug 2 and the predefined condition for it is x plus y is less than maximum of jug 2 so it is indicating us that by default y that is jug 2 is having capacity that it can hold the amount of water jug 1 is having so we can completely empty jug 1 into jug 2 we can pour all the water of jug 1 into jug 2 using rule number 8 and if no nothing is like that we cannot going to return anything so simple meaning is that these rules are predefined and what these rules are saying that these rules are going to be helpful for us for operating for operating over the current node and current node is going to iterate over these eight rules to generate the next node of the current node so the highlighted part is the part that i am highlighting that if x equals to equals to current node dot x and y equals to equals to current node dot y return none what does this mean this is simply indicating that if the value of x and y of the given node current node if they are going to match this code is going to return none what does this mean basically it means that a node with the same state already exists in the tree if the values of x and y are different then code is going to create a new node that is next node. This is only going to be create when the value of x and y are different. And the new node, next node with current node as its parent node will be created. So new node will be created and that new node is a child node of the current node. It means that current node will become parent node of that new node. And x and y for the next node, they are going to be provided the value of x and y. Basically, you can say that x and y for next node, they are set to provide the values of x and y and current node is set as a parent node of it. And finally, the code is going to return the next node. It means that it is generating the next node of the current node right thereafter thereafter if you can see let's come here to the bfs part so this generate all successor node uh, okay bfs part right so this is the bfs part so inside that we have just discussed about this operation function 
that using this operation function we can generate the next node and the value will be assigned to next node variable i hope this operation function is clearly understandable by you now in the case if next node is not equals to none it is going to append into the list one and it is going to be do so until next node become none it would only become none in the two cases if the goal is reached or goal is not reached it means that goal is reached successfully then next node will be none else if we are not going to find the complete solution in that case it will simply return the solution is not found but if the next node is not uh, none until that it is going to do the append all the nodes into the list one and this list one is going to return thereafter you if you are going to see we are using bfs main function this bfs main function you can simply see that which is having initial node and goal node as a parameter <laughs> right so this bfs main function if you are going to see this function bfs main function it is the main bfs algorithm and uh, it is going to take initial node and goal node as an argument and it is going to return the goal node is found if it is found it is going to return goal node is found so self dot bfs q dot append initial node it is going to append the initial node into the q and this is going to iterate until that particular q is become uh, you can simply say that the particular q is become empty till that it is going to uh, do the iteration and it is going to mark each node as a visited node and it is going to dq all the node one by one and it is, if we want we can also print the visited node by each and every point of view because bfs is going to work level by level you know it is a level order traversal so all the nodes that are going to be visited we can print it but our goal is to find the goal node so let's say initial node is 0 0 so it is going to be as a one parameter and the goal node is 2 comma 0 because we have already defined the class node which is returning in the format of x comma y so 0 0 is our initial node goal node is 2 comma 0 so if is goal now the which function we are calling is goal node visited node comma goal node so you can simply see that we need to go on to the is goal node so we have defined is goal node function here so you can simply see that this function the highlighted part it is a is goal function and this function is going to check if the current node if the current node is equal to goal node or not it means that what is our goal node 2 comma 0 so the value of x should be 2 and y should be 0 it means that the pair x comma y, the pair of current node x comma y, if they are matching to the pair of goal node x comma y, in that case, if they are equal, it is going to return true. And if they are not equal, it is going to return what? False. So this goal node is doing. So ultimately, it is just checking the current node and the final goal or current node or goal node are equal or not, right? And if they are equal, uh, they are going to give us the successor node one by one and we can print them also. And uh, if they are not, we can simply put it into the self list of the successor nodes and we can return none. So ultimately this function is uh, giving us an idea that uh, how goal node can be found and it is going to return true when, when the goal node and current node the visited node that we are visiting is a current node is equal to goal node, right? So let's come again to the function from where we have traversed. So inside the main function, we have traversed from here, BFS algo. And this BFS main function, which is a member function of BFS algorithm, if goal node and current node is equal, it is going to be assigned to the solution node. And just after this, the execution time will end. So the complete time taken by this BFS function is going to be evaluated under start time and end time. And thereafter, if solution is going to be found, it means that solution does not equal to none. It means that we are having solution. We can say solution can be found and we can print the path of that solution. Else, solution cannot be found using BFS algorithm.
and we can print out that how much execution time taken by it using difference variable and what it is doing it is just doing the subtraction of end time variable minus start time so this difference is nothing but the execution time taken by this bfs algorithm right so this is how bfs function is going to be run i hope it is very much clear to all of you now let's understand quickly how dfs algorithm will work so in dfs algorithm again it is starting starting the time and here again dfs algorithm is a function and dfs main is a member function of dfs algorithm this dfs algorithm is also taking initial node and goal node as an argument and the final value is going to be written under solution node variable so let's come to the dfs algorithm so if you are going to see the dfs algorithm uh, we have defined here the class dfs algorithm right so this class dfs algorithm is implementing dfs algorithm and it has four instances basically if you can see the one is dfs stack and other one is push node other one is push list and other one is is empty it is having four instance variables so this dfs stack this dfs stack is basically a stack because you know dfs depth first search uses stack as a data structure right so it is going to store the nodes and it is going to push the nodes and going to add a node to dfs stack there after this push list this push list instance variable is going to add a list of node to dfs stack right dot append means it is going to add all the list to dfs stack and is empty is going to check that uh, dfs stack is empty or not just similar like bfs right these four instances are working here thereafter this class is also having three methods one method is pop node the next method is is node in list and other one is generate random successor so pop node so this method if you can see this pop node method let me try to highlight it so this pop node method is returning the last node from the dfs stack it is going to return last node from dfs stack you know the property of a stack is first in last out so we can say that the topmost element of the stack or what we can say the last element of the stack it is going to pop out from dfs stack and thereafter is not in list what this is going to do this is not in list is a basically check whether there is a node in the list of nodes or not if there is a node it is going to return true if it is there is no node it is not going to return false right and thereafter generate random successor you know we have included the random right for generating random numbers so this part generate random successor so basically it is going to generate random successor nodes and this also going to be done under list rule is less than it it means that whatever list list rule we have defined based on that many random successors can be generated let's say if a node is having 0 0 it can become in the next state 0 3 or 4 3 or 3 0 or 4 right if 0 0 is there what is the possibility in the next state it may become 4 0 it may become 0 3 or it may become uh 0 0 or 4 3 right in first case it, it, either we can fill jug 1 or jug 2 so let's say if we are filling jug 2 that is 0 3 so in the next state what can be the successor of that it can be 3 3 or it can be 0 0 or it can be 3 0 if we are going to pour the water of second jug into jug 1 it would become 3 0 0 3 will become 3 0 or if we are emptying second jug 0 3 will become 0 0 or we are filling first jug again it will become 4 3 so that random successor will be generated using the list of rules and it is going to work all the operation right we you know that uh, we have already discussed this operation function using all that eight rules next node will be generated and all the random successor will be generated using the list rule which is less than it means that it is going to iterate over all that eight conditional statement 
and they are going to append as a next node, right? All that will be stored in the list one. So this function is just similar like the thing that we have discussed in the BFS. So basically using this rules, using this rules, uh, random sequential, uh, you can simply say that uh, successor we can generate. Now, one thing is that generate sequential uh, successor. So you know that at the end, at the end, what we will have at the end, we will have uh, the successors, right? We will have the successors in the in the DFS algorithm. And uh, what that successors will do basically, so that successors are nothing but the name of the nodes and that particular name of uh, nodes are, uh, uh, let's say uh, we need to manage them. So that can be managed sequentially like 0, 0, 0, 3, 3, 0, 3, 3, 4, 2. And thereafter, after 4, 2, it will become uh, like uh, uh, 0, 2 and thereafter 2, 0, right? And thereafter generate all successor. This generate all successor, they, this all generate all successor will generate the whole successor. And this is how it is going to work, right? So DFS main function here. This DFS main function is basically the main, main DFS algorithm will start working from here. And uh, this method take initial node and a goal node as, a, as an argument. And it is going to return the goal node if it is going to be found. So ultimately the concept is same that uh, if that particular uh, node is found, then it is going to return true. If it is not found, it is not going to return true. It is going to return false, right? And we can push the all the elements. You know that again, we are using goal node. The function of this node we have already discussed in BFS. That if current node is equal to goal node, it is going, that particular visited node is going to be treated and the process will stop. If current node is not going to be goal node, it means that we need to just treat that node as a visited node. And we again need to just write it as a visited node and do the same process again and again till that iteration will be stopped when the current node will become the visited node. Current uh, node will become the goal node. In that manner, we are generating all the successor nodes, right? And we are pushing all the elements into the successor. This is how this second uh, function that is DFS main function will return. At the end, if we are getting current node as a goal node at any particular point of view, at a, any particular point of time, that particular value will be stored in a solution node variable. And then this time, random time generator will stop. So this time function will stop. It means that it is going to count the number time that was taken by DFS algorithm for executing that particular problem, that particular solution, that in how many steps the goal node is formed, that particular time is going to be calculated. So if solution node does not equal to none, it means that we are having some solution, we can just print the path of that solution node. And if solution node is not found, we can simply say that solution node is not found. And we can just calculate the difference using end time minus start time. And we can print it like that. Execution time equals to different into 1000. Here also we have written like that. It means that we, if we want to express the execution time in millisecond, we can multiply that particular difference with 1000. So that time would be in milliseconds. Now let me try to run it. If I am uh, running it, you can see it is asking me the value of jug one. It means that this jug one. So let me try to put here four. The second one is value of jug two, let's three. And it is going to ask me the goal value that I need in jug one. I am putting two and you know, by default jug two is zero, we have defined. So just pre by pressing the enter key, you can simply see that the BFS algorithm is running the value of uh, Maximum jug is four, maximum jug two, goal is two, solution can be found and these are the stops. You know, initially zero, zero, thereafter zero, three, it means that we are completely filling jug two, rule number two. Thereafter, we are making all the water of jug two into jug one. So all water of jug two into jug one, I think rule number uh, either seven or eight, I think seven or eight, whatever, right? Thereafter, again, we are filling jug two, rule number two. Thereafter, uh, what we done, uh, uh, the jug 2 is poured into jug 1. 
and it is not completely filled but jug 1 is completely filled but jug 2 is still having some water so jug 1 we are completely pouring the water of jug uh, jug 2 into jug 1 until jug 1 becomes full it means that we might be rule number 5 or 6 thereafter we are making jug 1 empty completely empty rule number 3 and thereafter what we are doing we are pouring all the water of jug 2 into jug 1 i think rule number 8 so using uh, this this is nothing but the path. This is nothing but the path. And path post is 7. And this particular BFS algorithm run in 9 point some millisecond. Similarly, DFS algorithm also found. And that particular is the path. Here path post is 9. And uh, this is the time in milliseconds. So basically, uh, all the successor nodes will be generated. And at particular time, if the goal node will be reached, it is going to return it. Similarly here. At the particular time, it is going to return. If at the particular time, at any particular time, if it is going to reach that the goal node, it is going to return that path, right? So all the successor nodes will be there, but the path through which it traversed, it is going to write only that, right? Because I have just mentioned in the maximum jug and maximum jug to value in the comment section. Here successor nodes are in comment. Here successor nodes and print node are in success. Uh, pop all the nodes that are that we have popped up. If we are going to remove the comment marks before it, you can simply see that all the information it is going to print. If we are going to just uh, uh, remove all this uh, comment part now, it is going to give us the complete detail. It is going to give us the complete detailed over the algorithm, right? So let me try to remove from here also. And let me try to run it now. You are going to see that it is asking me value of jug 1, 4, jug 2, let's say 3, and let's say jug 1, we require 2 liter of water. Now you can see it is going to give us complete detail, right? Okay, 201 DFS main algorithm 171, right? Okay, so here you can see that solution node is found here and all the successor nodes are generated. You can simply see that all the successor nodes are generated. All the successor nodes are generated. Correct. You can see the complete detail this algorithm has done. All the things we have just uh, got at our point of view. Similarly, uh, you can simply see that uh, all the means it means that uh, this algorithm has run over this particular uh, nodes. All these are nodes in the tree. And at the end, at particular time, they are getting the goal node because it is a BFS and DFS. So they are going to generate all the nodes. They are going to store it in the, their particular data structure that might be there, whatever might be stake. And if they are reaching at the goal node, they are going to give us, right? Thereafter, at the end, they are giving us the sequential generator, sequential path. But all the information we are getting here, that what are the, what, how this algorithm has just executed, right? So now this is the thing. Okay. So. I hope the thing is clear and uh, if you are going to run it, you can run it now. Four and let's say three and let's say two. If you are going to print it again, simply you can say the pop node successor is not that, then thereafter pop node was that, right? It is generating them right now. So you can simply see that complete information <laughs> we can get that which node it has popped out, which it means that it is checking all the possibilities. So we can just generate it like this. We can generate it like this, right? It is taking time because it is still executing. So the thing is that we have just met them in the comment section first so that you can understand the basic point of view that how it is generated, right? So it is a long way we have come out, right? So simply you can see complete tree they have made and they are checking that this is the success or not because there might be many possibilities and at any particular point if they are getting the goal node they are going to write right so okay i think uh, okay see streaming the output truncated in last 5000 lines okay so still it is doing the pop node, right? It is executing the part. But our goal was just to find out the path. And I think that you can do it easily, right? That is why we have made them comment section. But 
it is going to see all the possibilities that can be possible over there right so i think the things are clear i think uh, you can get an overall idea basically the target was to get an overall idea of this code i think uh, this is going to helpful for you further if you are having any doubt or confusion or query you can ask me thank you so much guys have a very nice day jai hind jai bharat